Okay, good, good morning, everyone. And thank you so much for joining us today for this presentation on telemedicine, engaging in shared clinical decision-making. I wanna thank Dr. Isaacson for joining us today, as well as US World Meds for sponsoring the event. Uh, a couple of quick housekeeping items from the Parkinson Association. There will be a question and answer session at the very end of the presentation. The way that you can ask questions if you are unfamiliar with the GoToWebinar platform, if you navigate over to the control panel, typically it's on the side of your screen. If you go ahead and go to the drop down menu with questions, you can type your questions in there. Those questions will be directly sent to me. If they're regarding anything technical like sound or audio, uh, I will answer those directly, but if they are in regards to the presentation, I will hold those until the end and pop on and ask those for everyone. There were a couple of questions that were submitted beforehand and we'll get to those in the question and answer session as well. There will be a follow-up email sent out tomorrow around this time with a recording of the session as well as any handouts that are available. If you navigate over to the side panel again, the handouts are available there for downloading. They include a great telemedicine checklist from US World Meds that you can reference when you're getting ready for your own, with your own appointment. So with that, I'm gonna click over to a couple of upcoming webinars that we have next week. Both are on Thursday, June 11th. The first is from 10 to noon, and that will be on advanced treatments with Dr. Drew Kern from the University of Colorado. And then we also have a Parkinson's 101 intro to PD Self. PD Self is a self-efficacy learning forum that was originated here in Denver, but has expanded nationally. And we're just doing a quick little intro to those. All of those programs are available on our website. You can visit www.parkinsonrockies.org backslash online programs to see all of those registration links as well as all of our virtual exercise classes that we are offering. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and switch over control to Dr. Isaacson. Great, let's see, show this window. I think you can see my slides now. I'm glad to uh, join you all today, at least virtually, and um, talk a little bit about something that uh, really has been on a lot of uh, minds lately with this COVID situation and uh, how to really take care of Parkinson's uh, disease and people who have Parkinson's and, and people who uh, love people who have Parkinson's. And we put together this presentation to try to uh, give some uh, structure to what is telemedicine and how can you use telemedicine just like you use a regular visit? Uh, what can you do to make sure that talking to your doctor or nurse by the phone or by a video uh, visit will be useful? And, and what can you do to make sure that you can be part of the decision-making process on trying to continue to treat Parkinson's disease even though we have this uh, COVID situation? Um, and uh, this was put together in conjunction with uh, Dr. Power and, and Dr. Lyons in Kansas and U.S. World Meds that markets uh, several medications for treating Parkinson's disease. And we'll talk a little bit about what is telemedicine, how do you connect for an appointment, what should you do to prepare for a visit, and how can you best make sure you're sharing all of your symptoms and problems that you experience during the visit, and how do you participate in being examined uh, over the video link. And then most importantly, I think, how do you make sure that all your questions are addressed and that you get the best treatment for your Parkinson's symptoms and you don't ignore them during this time. Uh, so you can continue to uh, continue to, 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 to treat these problems. Sorry, Dr. Isaacson, for some reason, we're not yeah. seeing your slides. Um, let me go ahead okay. and- Okay, were they there and they went away? Hmm. Um. They were just showing up were white. So there. Went away. Give me one moment. I'm gonna. Were they initially uh, there? No, they were not. Let me try this again. <laughs> they were not there. Okay. So, show this window. Hmm. Okay. So that's not working. Let's see why. Um. 
Oh. So give key pointer chief. There we go. Is it there now? Yep, okay, they are. So Thank you. The setting on, on here, I had to show the main screen. Or, oh, okay, so you see it now. Yes, thank so we'll you. talk about all these things. Okay, great. A little glitch. Now, that glitch might have been planned because what we want to try to explain is that this is no big deal doing these Zoom calls and video calls and all. If something doesn't work, we just stop, we fix it, and we go forward. So what is telemedicine? So it's important to think about treating Parkinson's disease and not ignoring it during these months that turn into months and longer than months and months. Uh, or into a lot of stay at homes that are approaching three months. And we really don't wanna go and on and on without addressing the symptoms that occur. We wanna be able to think about whether medications can be adjusted, whether new medications can be tried. So we can make sure we stay ahead of Parkinson's and not let it get ahead of us. And you can do this by continuing to have appointments with your doctors and nurses, whether it's in person or on the telemedicine visit. Telemedicine visits are just like a regular routine visit. You talk face to face with the doctor. You may see a nurse, a medical assistant as well. And you, this is all being done in many different ways. But all these different ways have a picture. And it's a picture you'll see the doctor and you'll see yourself in a little square on the bottom of a screen or a phone or a computer. And the doctor will see you in, in a big uh, picture and, and themselves if they choose to. These appointments are made in advance often, and often you'll get a phone call to confirm it. And they'll tell you then whether they're gonna send you a text or an email, or they'll just call you. Some people use FaceTime, some use Skype, uh, all different ways of trying to do this. But usually you'll hear from the office a day or two before to set this up and make sure uh, that you know what to do. And this can really begin your time to prepare, uh, to prepare for this type of visit. You wanna write down so you can remember whether you're gonna get an email or a call or a text. A call or a text, you have to have your phone with you to make sure that at the time of your visit, you can get that and click on it. If it's an email, you have to make sure you got the email ahead of time, that it didn't go to the junk mailbox. And in the email, it'll probably have a link that you click on. Some of these uh, appointments might be by an app that you have to download. Some might be by a web link that you click on, it opens in your browser, or it might just be on your phone. Um, and the new office can tell you that beforehand. And you wanna think about what will you use? Will you use your phone? Do you have an iPad or a Surface tablet that can be propped up? Is there a computer that you use that can be, you can sit in front of? And to think about which device you'll use and, and how you're going to have it held. And if you can prop it up somewhere is probably more ideal than holding it in your hand. While the appointments can be done anywhere, in your kitchen or in a living room or a dining room or in an office, you want to try to think about a place that might have good lighting, that there won't be a bright window behind you that can give a glare. If it's possible to have a place where you can walk where the camera can see you, either by having the camera propped up and you walk behind the chair you're sitting in, or if you have a friend or a family member or a caregiver that can help hold the camera while you walk in and hold your arms up and tap and, and all the things we do in an examination. Uh, during the visit, you might be asked to move or adjust your camera or to fix the lighting or to have someone nearby, but it's important to remember that it doesn't have to be perfect, that everyone can do telemedicine visits and we do the best that we can do. And if the lighting is not good and the phone has to be held and we can't see all the examination, that's okay, as long as we're not ignoring Parkinson's during uh, this COVID time. You should be prepared, though, to be able to tell everything you want to be told. Don't feel pressured that you only have a short period of time. A telemedicine visit should be just as long as a regular visit. You should be able to take out your medication list, and you should write down your medications on a piece of paper and keep it near where you're going to sit for the telemedicine visit. You might want to keep your medicine bottles on that table for the day so that you can look at the bottle and make sure you have the right doses when you're talking to the nurses and medical assistants and your doctors. You want to make a notes of 
what's changed since your last visit? Are you having more trouble with this symptom or that symptom? You want to think about both motor symptoms and non-motor symptoms, and importantly, your response to each dose of medication. How are you when you take your medicine? How quickly does it begin to work? How well does it work? Any side effects when it's working? How long does it last? What happens when it wears off? And when do you take your next dose? All these things can be very helpful to write down ahead of time. So you can really be prepared to make sure that all your symptoms are considered and all your questions can be answered. Remember, it's not just the tremor and movement and walking, but also non-motor symptoms that can occur. Problems with memory, hallucinations, depression, anxiety, especially during these times, a loss of interest or motivation, compulsive behaviors, lightheadedness when you stand up, losing your balance or falling or almost falling, needing help to dress or bathe or cook, needing to use a cane or a walker for some people. If you're feeling tired, sleepy, fatigued, or you have trouble sleeping at night, or you have vivid dreams or act out your dreams, all these problems are part of Parkinson's disease we know now. And they should be included when you write down the problems that you're ha having so they can all be discussed. This may be an opportunity during telemedicine to really get all your symptoms out of the open and talked about and evaluated. If you're taking levodopa, think about what times you take them. Are you usually on time? Does the medicine work well for every dose or do some doses not work as well as others? Do some doses take longer than usual to work? How are you first thing in the morning when you wake up? How long does it take until that first dose is taken? And how long does the first dose take to work? Do you ever notice a time of day when you have trouble, where you have trouble moving and you have an off episode? These times of the day when the medicine effect is no longer working so well and off episodes occur and you have symptoms that get better when you take your next dose and it begins to work. If you have dyskinesia, these extra involuntary movements that can occur after you take levodopa. Um, some people have these. If you do, when do they occur? Do they interfere with different activities? Do they occur with every dose or some doses? And once you've written down all your, all your questions and, and all of your symptoms and you've talked about them with your doctor on the visit, you want to think about how can you best participate in the examination? If you're very close to the camera, it may be hard for someone to see your hands. If you're further away, they can probably see your hands. And if you position the camera, they can see how you tap your feet and how you stand. And if someone is holding the camera for you or you have it propped up, you'll be able to stand up and walk and, and we can see how you walk. All these things can be helpful, but we don't have to do as full an exam on the video call that we do in person sometimes but we can do a lot that can help us make the best decisions for you. Being able to walk in an area of your home may be helpful. So think about where could you walk that's near the camera or if someone can hold the camera uh, while you're walking. And after you discuss your symptoms and you examined on the video, it's important to be able to take the time with your doctor on the telemedicine call to really talk about what symptoms are most important? What problems need to be addressed? What are potential benefits of changing medicines and what are potential side effects that can occur? Is it time to start a new medicine and add it to what you're already taking to try to make things better? Some people might think, oh, well, I'm just at home. Maybe I don't wanna make a medication change now, but that may be a good time to make a medication change while you're at home so you can see how it affects you. You want to take an active role in thinking about what's best for my Parkinson's now. Do I really want to put off making changes? Well, maybe now's a good time to try to manage the medicines and try to improve how the response is. If you have family members who live in different areas, even out of the, out of the state or out of the country, they can be included on these calls because these telemedicine visits can call in multiple people so everyone can be on the screen together and you'll be able to really have a good conference call and get everything taken care of. So I think it's important to think about uh, the telemedicine, just a regular office visit. It can be simple and doesn't have to be perfect, but it's best if you're prepared and you write down the questions you wanna ask and the problems you're having, have the medicines handy. Think about how you're going to have the camera 
held, whether it's a computer or an iPad or a phone, whether they're going to call you or text you, or you have to click on something to connect with them. And then make sure that you're going to address all your questions and continue to talk over the 20 or 30 minutes that this call may take. So that's all the information we've sort of wanted to cover with the telemedicine content, but I'm happy to answer any questions about uh, telemedicine or about Parkinson's in general. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for going through the benefits of telemedicine.